Hey McFly subscribers. So today we are going to tie this right here. Okay, it's a little hopper pattern I kind of came up with. I mean, it's some versions I've seen of other hoppers that I kind of mashed a whole bunch of techniques together, but especially that, that wing. And I'll show you that. Well, I already showed you how to do the wing, but I'll show you how to tie this and, and I'll link to that video on how to do those wings. All right, so first we are going to make the legs for this hopper. So I've got the, you don't have to do this. You could do all brown or any color that you choose. Um, for this, I'm gonna be doing the tan brown speckled and then the, the hot orange, both of them medium. From And these are the centipede legs, by the way. So you can use any round leg. You can do all black, all um, white, whatever you want. Um, doing chartreuse, that would be kind of cool. Um, chartreuse leg. But what we're going to do is um, I find it's a little easier to use these plunger style hackle pliers. And we are just going to try to only get the, the back portion here. And I'm sure after getting quite a few, you can get pretty good at doing this. And I'm not. <laughs> there we go. You just want to tie a knot, okay? Like that. And try to keep it towards the top because we don't need length there, but we do in the, the base, right? So there we go. There's that. And then we're going to tie another knot at the very end because we don't need these to be really long legs. And so why waste, right? Although I guess it would be easier if we were tying it right in the center, probably. So you can kind of grab it with the hackle pliers like so, get in there. There we go. And then we tie that knot. And again, we're trying to keep it close to the top here. There we go. So then I have this. This is made by Solarez. It's called Bone Dry Flex. This is kind of a newer thing that they have, but I used to put a drop of super glue. I actually find that this works a little better. And it's flexible, so you're not gonna have an issue. So you just put a little dot right at the knot there. Cure that in, and that'll help kind of keep that from coming loose and it also adds a little bit more bulk at the knot so it keeps it looking more more like a hopper leg uh, elbow there or whatever knee I guess and that's cured so next we are going to use any scissors you want um, I actually like these these are a little bit easier to get in tighter these are by Risen so I'm going to cut off right there like that. And then we are right in the center. There we go. And those are the legs. A little thicker at the base. And then kind of jets off like that. So it looks just like the hopper leg. So the hook I'm using here today is Risen's Barbless Nymph Hook 9231. Okay. It is a 1x short shank, um, 2x heavy wire, but I'm going to be honest. I mean, that's a pretty long shank. Okay. So, uh, you know, normal shank nymph hook will work. You can go a little bit longer if you wanted to, if you want to do a 1x long, however you want to do it. But I find that this is a really good hook for this. So we're going to start our thread, but I'm using Viva 6 Ot in brown. Okay. So we're going to start our thread and we don't need to start right at the very front. Um, just not needed. You can if you want. It's not going to hurt anything, but and today I'm using these scissors. They're Risen's um, mitten scissors, they call them. Really good. I, I really like them. So we're going to bring this all the way back, kind of slightly into the bend, and then come back up to right at the start of the bend. Next, I've got this River Road cutter, and we are going to be cutting this this is a uh, glued pieces uh, a foam together you can see that there's um, brown on the bottom yellow on the top you can do any color combo you want but i am going to cut
cut this. The only difference is I'm going to leave, instead of cutting off at the edge here, I'm going to leave a little bit. And that makes this a little bit longer. And you'll see that's important for this fly. So you can see it's cut all the way through. Let's go ahead and pull that off. And then simple, you just use scissors. Cut the rest of the length. And there we go. We've got a little bit longer piece, which we will need. All right, so this piece, what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna take the front here. We're gonna just mash this down, kind of flatten it, really kind of work that piece, okay? So that's gonna make life easier in a little bit. And then we're gonna measure out the tail. And you can see on this one here, um, there's the tail, okay? So kind of wanna make sure that we are you know, roughly at the same length, coming out back, which, you know, is about, I would say, a hook gap, maybe a little bit longer than a hook gap, okay? And we're just gonna, we're gonna take that measurement and tie this in like so, okay? So there's the, the measurement. However, that we're gonna undo that, so now we've got, we've got a little marker here, so we can see, and we're gonna take a razor blade, okay, or a sharp knife or something, and right at where that measurement is, we're going to just slice down the center with our razor blade. Okay, you don't have to go all the way up to the front here, but just enough so, as you can see, that this is going to sit right inside the hook shank. You can see, so the hook shank goes right inside there. And if you look also the front here, you're not slicing deep into there. Sorry, it's hard to see. You're not slicing too deep. So that's actually gonna push this up and have it raised just slightly. Okay, so now you've got that. Let's pull this off for a second. Let's grab a little bit of super glue and we're just gonna put a dot of super glue right there. Shoot, I did this backwards, guys. <laughs> we need to put that uh, slit, my bad. You know what? So the slit needs to go on the lighter side because we're putting the lighter side on the bottom. So let's do that. Sorry, it's hard to do on camera here. I'm gonna be honest. So then now we got that slit. We're just gonna push that in like so. We're gonna make sure we bring this up. We wanna make sure that it's sitting right in there before we go ahead and Tie that in right at that measurement. Okay. And that little dot of super glue and the slit is gonna help keeping this from spinning too much. It still will. Okay. And then we want to bring our, our thread so we don't have a lot of um, uh, space between the tip of the um, bobbin and the where we're tying and we're going to cross up over like I just did there up over and then over like this. So we're making a, a segment and then we can cross up over, do the same thing. And excuse my kids yelling in the background. I, they know I'm tying on video, but you know, it is what it is. We just got a puppy, by the way. And the dog's going in my son's room and he doesn't want it in there. So, you know, anyway, so that's what we did right there. <laughs> Excuse the distraction. But now we've made segments. As you can see on the bottom, it looks like little segments. Okay, so that's perfect. And then we are going to cross up over a little bit more space in between. So we have a bigger segment. Okay, and then we're gonna do a third one, but I am going to grab that super glue and we're just gonna keep this from rotating on us and pull this up. I'm gonna lay that down into that trench that we made, cross up over. So we have even bigger segment as it goes up and there we go. So now we've got a little bit of space. You can see the size of the space and the segments that we made. So this is now segmented. I didn't do a great job on this. Okay, so I can you can see that there. That should have been up over the top more. Let's let's see if we can fix that.
you know, if you're not happy with something, go back, fix it. There we go. That looks a little better. Okay, I, I did that back here. I'm not going to go all the way back there, but you get the point. I'm trying to make that as, as good as you can, okay? All right, so now that's the, the body. Next, we've got these legs that we had made. What we want is the legs to kind of, let me turn this a little bit. We want them to kick out a little bit, like so, rather than in. We don't want them to kick in like that. So kind of want them to kick out, and we're just going to tie that in. Uh, by the way, you want that knot to be right about, you know, in between the last segment and the second from last segment there, okay? And so, all right, like that. Perfect. And you can see that's angling down. I kind of like to have the legs, just like a hopper, angle up like that. And then you can take this and spin it a little bit like so to make sure that kicks out. And there we go. All right, so there is the leg. You can see it's kind of angled out. It's perfect. And then we're gonna rotate this over. I'm gonna tie the other leg in on the other side. Just like the other one, we want this to kick out. And we also want this, this is probably harder than the other one because we've gotta make sure that this is angled or this is uh, positioned correctly and also angled. Um, so you can't really move it back and forth uh, very well. So let's tie that in and then we can always adjust. So that's really kicked out way too far out so let's spin this you can see now that that's not at the same position so we got to pull that back out make sure that we've got enough space there it's kicked really far out i mean that's okay that's better than kicked in there we go let's see now we need a little bit more here so pull it there we go so that's positioned about right all right, good, happy with that. All right, so now we are going to cut these off. Keep the brown one, or the red, but keep them, okay? Because we are gonna use them for the front legs. Or you could just grab a new, new rubber leg. So next, I've got this uh, crystal flash. Now this is a uh, midge crystal flash. You could go regular crystal flash, but I want this sticking out about a, a segment or two past the tail there. Oh, it got moved. All right, right there. So we're just gonna tie that in like so. And I got three strands, by the way. So there's a couple, couple wraps, and then we're gonna pull it back over itself, make a couple wraps, and then we will cut this off flush. So that makes a total of six little strands of the crystal flash for an underwing. Next, I've got this Polish CDC. This is a honey color. You could use any color you want. Um, but I'm just going to grab one of those. And I like how these are, I like the Polish CDC. You don't have to use the Polish. You can use any CDC feather, but I like them because if you look, you can kind of, it's going to be blurry. It's hard to see, but you just can grab one. Let's see if I can do that on video, but yeah, grab one and it's positioned correctly. They're nice and stacked. Instead of trying to dig into a bag, <laughs> it can be a pain. So you just want to tie Part of the stem in and yes that's way too long and what we're just going to do is with two wraps tying the stem in and we're going to pull this back and we're going to pull it back to where as you can see it's just to the back edge of that maybe a little bit longer than the tail of the of the hopper so we tie that in then we're going to pull it back tie it in on itself to make sure it won't won't move clip that off Close. And that for some reason wanted to kick off to the side, so you just want to try to position it correctly. All right, so we've got a double underwing there. One is a little longer than the other. The crystal flash is longer. All right, and then pretty much the star of the show here is those those wings that I created uh, on a on that video uh, last week. So these you want to measure out, um, and you might want to cut them a little little thinner than I had done on the video. I found that I like them a little thinner. I mean, it's up to you though. So I wanna measure these out to right, like so. So a little bit of this is sticking out, um, even the, the tail or the, the back end like that. And then we're just gonna take these scissors. And we're gonna, right where the tie-in is here, right at the back edge of the tie-in, we're gonna cut a notch. So now we know that's where it is. Now we're not gonna cut all the way in, just up into right before the 
So you're probably not on video there, but um, what we're doing is we're cutting the notch right up into where the stem of the feather is, just right before the stem, okay? Not all the way into the stem. And then we can cut the whole thing off back here. We don't need all that, just need a little, little tag end like this. And we're just gonna cut up there what we're doing is we're creating, and then on this side too, we're just creating a little tie-in point, okay? Um, and then to fancy this up a little bit, we're gonna round off that, um, that corner just to look more like a, a wing. Okay, so there we go. It's not perfectly even, but that's okay. Nature is never perfect. We're just gonna lay that right on top. And we're gonna cover up all those, all the under, wing there and tie that in a couple wraps like so make sure it's positioned directly on top which that looks good and we can just pull back yeah i didn't leave that tag in long enough there that's okay um, i'll put a little dab of super glue oh there we go you can see so i pulled up that Part of that and retie on top of that that'll make sure that doesn't come out just to be sure let's do just a little little bit of super glue that'll ensure that nothing pulls out all right so there we go that's the back portion of the fly we're gonna pull this up and we're gonna wrap up to just shy of the hook eye you can see I've got a little bit of space back from the hook eye maybe a little too far I did Perfect. All right, so this is where when you squish this, you flattened it, um, it's gonna make things a little easier in the next couple steps. So we're gonna wrap over this like so. You know what? I'm gonna add a, another drop of super glue right up there, right on those thread wraps to ensure that this doesn't spin too much. You wanna make sure you're not getting any in the eye of the hook. Pull this up forward, wrap up over it. You can see it wants to rotate a little and I got super glue on there doesn't look great but that's okay because all that's going to get covered up as long as up here doesn't you're good it is um, UV2 uh, diamond diamond bright okay and I'm using the root beer right there the root beer color that's the color I'm using you could use the bright orange if you wanted in fact maybe I do that I don't know um, my next ones but so far I've been using the you can use any dubbing, guys. It doesn't have to be this bright, shiny stuff, but I think it looks good. Um, it'll get the attention of sunfish for sure, and that's kind of what I'm using this for. Um, if you're doing for trout and you want it a little more subtle, then definitely uh, do like an antron or whatever. Um, any kind of dubbing will work on this. You're just basically covering up that, and you don't have to go all the way to the front. Okay, there we go. And then we are going to bring this back to right about there. Okay, so it's it's a little past the halfway point on this. Okay, we're bringing our thread back to. Okay, because we're going to fold this back over. But you will see in a second what we're going to do. We're going to make that head a little bit bigger. So I got this. It's black foam. We're going to cut a little strip of black foam like this. We're going to lay this up over it. Okay. I'm going to pull this forward. And I didn't come up with this technique, by the way, so don't, don't think I'm trying to say I did. Um, but it's pretty cool. It's on. I saw a video of, I want to say Charlie Craven doing this. I thought it was really cool. Then you tie that down like so. Then you come in with some fine point scissors. You cut that off, and now you've got little hopper eyes. It kind of looks pretty good. And that would be a little more dramatic if this was the underbody here was not black or the up, up or I'm sorry brown dark brown if you had like a tan or something um, that would look a little, little more dramatic or chartreuse or whatever color you're doing and then I like to fancy these up you don't have to you could just leave it square like that but I like to cut little notches it just looks good I think it looks a little better this little thing of foam and I am going to cut first a little notch in the front we're going to put that in just on top. A 
And I didn't do this with the other one that I was showing, but I usually like to fancy up my, my flies a little bit like that. So I'll just cut this off semi-close and that gives you a little hot spot. You don't have to do that hot spot, but it's nice when you're on the river. Um, <laughs> trying to see a big bright orange spot is a little easier to see. I'm just going to grab a little bit more of this uh, dubbing. Try to space that out a little bit more. Piece, and we're just going to go over that like so. You can see I'm ending the dubbing, and as I do, I come up under and wrap around the, the hook eye. You can see that we've got enough room to do that. Um, we wouldn't have, you know, I've got a lot, of, a lot of stuff here. Let's pull all that out so that way we're not fighting material up at the eye. All right. And you can, if you've got, if you don't have a lot of space, you can kind of pinch up there and that'll kind of knock some of the stuff back. But there we go. Now you can just whip finish right at the head. And so that black foam technique there, um, kind of not only it makes it a bigger size, but it also gives it that, that head or the dot. It looks pretty good. Um, all right. This is kicked off a little bit. You might want to add a little dubbing over it to kind of lay those back a little bit, but that's fine. I didn't do this one perfect, but you guys get the idea. And then you can cut these to whatever length you want. Okay, so I'm going to try to cut them. Oh, that one's a little shorter. So let's, there we go. And unfortunately, it's kind of kicked off to the side. They're, they're angled different. It is what it is, but you get the idea. You can play with that and make sure that they're positioned right. Um, you know, what can help is if you need, you can come in like this, put a little dot, tiny dot of super glue, stretch it out. And see how that kind of kicked it outward a little bit? So let's try that once more. Let's pull it. When you pull it, it kind of stretches that. Um, that glue and makes it want to position. So that was probably too high there. You get the idea. So you can see that it definitely moved it. You can do the same thing with this one. If you need, there's little tricks that you can do with rubber legs. So if you get some on the base there, you just twist it and then move it to where you want it. And then pull on it. And that'll kind of see how that kind of kicked it up it changed the position a little bit, so you can do that, but there we go. So it's got a nice little uh, wing case back there. I mean, it's a regular hopper, extended body. It looks pretty good. I think uh, this is definitely going to... Oh, shoot, guys. You know what I forgot to do? <laughs> uh, these new, new flies. All right. So this is what you should have done. It's going to mess it up with that dubbing, but you'll get the idea here. We're going to... Put one leg like that. There we go. I'm going to put, you would do this before you add this dubbing collar that we just did. Put another leg like so. There we go. Come up under, then whip finish. Can't tell you how hard it is to tie on camera. Things that will never go right every time. People say, why not just retie it, you know, and refill, get a better one. Well, I like to I like to show people my mistakes so that way you guys can figure out how to fix your own or, you know, sometimes you learn better from others' mistakes than you do from what they do right. So now you guys can learn. But there we go. I think it's a pretty good pattern. I'm going to try it for some sunfish out here. I have not fished it yet. Um, I mean, again, it's not really my pattern, um, technically, but, um, you know, just final thing here, I would say you're going to want to cement up the head and for that, the actual bone dry that not the, not the flex, but the actual bone dry, just a little dot with its paintbrush. It comes with a paintbrush. And that's right up by the whip finish there, and that should keep that from ever coming undone. You can see with the UV, how oh, there's some like chartreuse parts in that, that dubbing. That's the UV too. It bright brightens up. I mean, it really attracts the fish, I think. So, um, 
you know, play with this and different colors and maybe even different techniques and see what you guys come up with. But I think that's going to be a pretty good little, little pattern there. So if you like the video, please, uh, hit, uh, please subscribe if you haven't already, or, and also hit the like button if you like it. Um, also, uh, check out my sponsor. Risenfly is my sponsor. That's not why I use their hooks. I was using their hooks before they were my sponsor. Also, I was using their rods and reels and loved them. So I approached them for sponsorship and they said, absolutely. So I'm really happy to have them as my sponsor. Um, great quality stuff at a good price. Um, that's the thing is like a package of hooks. I think it's 25 hooks you get. And uh, there's a little more in this because I had two packages. I added some to the other, but uh, you get 25 per Per package and they're like four dollars and fifty cents for good great quality barbless hooks i mean these are strong they're super sharp um really really good quality i mean i'm barely touching it it's just going right in my skin there so um definitely check them out uh also they're offering a discount on whatever you buy so you get a rod they have a 119 dollar rod um, that is really amazing it's a really good rod and you could get that for about 100 bucks after the discount so it's, again it's 15 percent off type in mcfly at checkout when you go to www.risenfly.com you get 15 percent off on your first order so definitely check them out let me know what you guys think about this fly and if you guys go fish it if you have good luck with it I'd like to hear the, about that. If you haven't, um, if you if you didn't have good luck, um, or you there's a problem with it, please let me know too. I'm always looking to get some help on you know recommendations and stuff. So anyway, I will see you guys on the next video. Now you go catch some fish. So here's the other one I tied, guys. Um, it's a little better, as you can see, a lot better. This is more kind of what I was going for. So. And you can see those legs are positioned correctly. Um, I did tie this a little bit longer. Um, so you could do it that way if you wanted. I find a little bit shorter looks better in my opinion uh, for the CDC. But there we go. So there's kind of the pattern. I didn't do the, the thing on top there because I didn't need it. But sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But there we go. Um, that looks a lot better, I think. So up to you guys um, how you tie it. Uh, I think I probably need to go a little bit further up than I did on, on this one. I left that head a little bit too big, I think. So I th that could be it. So anyway, this looks a little bit better hopper, but you can see it there. So <laughs> when I mess up on tying on the videos, I like to show what, what could be, you know? Um, so always a little better when I'm not, when I'm not on video. So um, anyway, I will see you guys in the next video. Now you go catch some fish.